I'm making this video um, uh, just on the fly pretty much because I anybody who likes to play the guitar might want to learn some basic stuff with it I'm no guitar expert uh, I do have a to say a passion to play for the guitar um, I've written and played songs on YouTube of my own uh, as for now I've never recorded somebody else's song and put it out there um, but uh, I just kind of uh, thought that people may want to know certain things maybe they see things with guitars or always seems easier than it is well, I think it is if you just try um, they say the piano is a lot uh, easier to learn if not the easiest and that the guitar is the hardest now technically I you know tooted along with a piano far be before I ever played with a, a guitar but I've never m in any way mastered uh, a p playing the piano I can very very little keep along so I'm making this video to show people now the first thing is I have to explain with my guitar is this capo now I believe that this capo is set on G. People will go, oh, what do you mean by that? Well, usually this white here, the, the bone here, is usually where most guitars are tuned at G. Now, you use up these frets. Frets are these uh, little metal bars going across here, and they get used up by when you're on your guitar and you're moving your fingers back up and down a little bit and you wobble them, and then each fret will use up a little. So I have my G set here so that I use the frets up higher on the guitar and then I have my guitar tuned down a little lower which is where I play anyways most of my songs as well as it allows me to keep this area in here uh, the frets um, not as used as well because when I'm playing somebody else's song I'm always putting on a capo up here or up here or even higher so I can still play their songs sounds I, I enjoy it, but at least I get more use and more uh, time out of my frets. So, you know, I might get a guitar and for the first few play it on there, but when you put guitar strings on and they start stretching, I think that they just, you don't stretch them as far when you just lower your entire, um, every key, basically. So uh, you'll get a, long, a more time, I believe, out of your strings too. So that's first thing you need to know for beginners who want to own a guitar. Um, you'll need a capo. Uh, if you're planning on playing other people's songs and you're not a professional, if you're a professional, you, you can get away without the capo most times just because, you know, if you do a bar chord like that, which you can see this finger here, okay, this finger here and these fingers over here, essentially if I take this finger off, I hope you can see very well, I'm gonna, there's always a bend to your fingers, you try to keep your fingers, um, I guess to say at a right angle coming down at those uh, strings because if you start putting a cross pressure you'll, you'll touch other strings so that's practice will get you that um, anyways my three fingers uh, not this one here but the three others are essentially doing the shape of an E now not up there it doesn't make an E if you want to make an E you would bring it down to where your um, capo is one from and if you look that finger kind of that's what the capo looks like see so there's your capo you can see it or now you don't see it I should say and it's my finger kind of looks all bent and out of shape but my my finger is actually doing what the capo does so there's your E now just a simple little basic strum there I'm not showing you the other hand it's not really important because it changes to all it's what's gonna pretty much make every song sound what it needs to sound like your other hand this is just what, regardless to the song you're going to have, you need to know this part, your your notes. So, again, this is your uh, capo, okay? Or this would be considered a bar chord if you were doing it from here, okay? So, I know the lighting might hopefully is uh, uh, not too shabby in this. I'm trying, I got a pillow underneath my guitar too to kind of prop it up and keep me from shaking as much because I shake a lot and I'm kind of stretching to reach my guitar too because I'm trying to keep uh, everything here in focus for you so you can see. So um, my guitar uh, is going to need new frets soon. Uh, I could probably... You can hear it? There's a... Uh, on these on the few last ones here, you can hear that... Um, it's, uh, 
it's, it's like touching itself and it, it's not coming back off of so it's kind of like wiggling along the other frets and touching because this one is so low that it's actually the strings making contact with the next one so this is one big reason I have my capo put the way I have because when I'm playing other people's songs well it's all up I'm, I'll be playing a song up here like for somebody else's song and most people's songs but when I play for myself I can play far more songs and I'd have to have that sound so now I guess I'll show you um, there's different kinds of capos I have for different kinds of guitar um, I have I guess what you would call um, there's a little bit of contour to the neck of my guitar but it is fairly flat not perfectly but really really close so um, the more you get the neck this way um, the more of a curve it starts to have and the more you go back down towards this way the flatter uh, uh, my neck of my guitar tends to have um, it's I wouldn't say it's perfectly flat but it looks almost perfectly flat here and up higher you can see the the, the little bit of contour now to speak about my capo here um, make sure you can see it okay this is a, a um, what I would ca a very common capo. Um, it has a tiny contour up here at the top, if you can see. Um, now this one, I'll try to come under the guitar, I guess. Maybe it'll be a little easier for me to hold. Okay, uh, let's see. Okay, now this is how you would, you can clearly see there's a spring. Now these have a warranty on them and they will stop to work after a while. Now, the, again, the higher you put them up on your guitar, that the wider the neck actually gets, uh, or thicker, I should say, not wider, but thicker. Um, it also, I guess, gets a little wider too, but uh, uh, just by a little bit, but it actually gets thicker. So what happens is, is the spring on this, the tension will get greater and greater the higher you go up the neck, and then it wears out the spring. You don't want to leave this on your guitar overnight or when you're not playing the guitar. Now, for myself, I tend to just, um, if I'm on the go somewhere, I'll just open it a little and then clip it at the top of my guitar. Sometimes I'll just sit it inside the hole of my guitar so it's kind of just leaning there. And if you notice, there are there is a little rubber all the way around here and one at the very back. Maybe like kind of, it's like it's meant to rest on that area anyways. So, um... It just gives you an idea. Now, some people put their capos on, uh, I don't call it backwards, but upwards like this, okay? Now, I'm not gonna tell you it's really wrong. The Okay, uh, you kinda wanna always get that straight across too and not too crooked, because it can change your notes by just a bit, and even your, your hand when you're moving it can hit this. So, uh, you, you wanna tend to keep it like that, you can move her back down a little more, but it has to stay in between those and not too close to it to give you a good sound. Now, the problem with turning your capo with the, with the flat side down here and you're hooking it from underneath is that the strongest amount of pressure right now is on your little string. And the least amount of pressure is up on your big string. Theory says, though, that this big string is actually harder to push down. It might not cut into your fingers as much, but it takes, because it's so much bigger, a lot more pressure to sort of hold down. So that's why I put my capo on this way. I find it gives a slightly different sound. And uh, let me see, uh, just push it up. I'm trying to, to look on the camera here, and it's, uh, you know, when you're watching yourself, it's a little glitchy, so it's, so that's how you would want to set your capo and always strum it before you start playing because you want to know if you... Sometimes when you put your capo on, you actually push a string down. I don't know if you can see that. And you might have a few strings. You might grab a couple strings and push them down like that and that'll make everything sound horrible. So I tell people, put your capo on, hit the strings first and then bring, let the back go against the back of the neck of your guitar. So you're making proper connection with your strings and you're not going across your strings in a in a fashion of pressing some and over uh, others. Um, I hope that explains a lot with the capo. Um, I'll take my capo off now here, uh, just so I don't have those uh, those uh, dull, um, uh, not full sounding notes that are vibrating off of other frets. Okay. Um, 
these uh, dots right here, I can't actually see them unless I'm looking at the at the monitor because I have to be looking from the front of the guitar. But right up here, I don't know on all guitars, but my guitar, I actually have a little dot that's on the neck here. And then I can see another little dot right here on the neck, uh, next one up. Uh, I don't know if I should be able to go this way. Uh, yeah. And then there'll be two more away again. There'll be another dot. And then three away from that, there's two dots. Um, you can get ne guitars with longer necks and whatnot. Um, uh, not to say there's female guitars and male guitars, but really there are. I don't want to call them children guitars. But the, the width of your neck here could be slightly smaller or wider. For instance, if you get a 12 string guitar, this would be, I have one, but it's far wider across here. A 12 string guitar isn't something uh, a, a person for the first time is gonna wanna try to play because every finger is gonna have to push down two chords at a time, which is gonna take even more muscle for each finger and strength. Um, I would say I have uh, finger abilities better on one hand than I do the other, strictly because of the, uh, not necessarily always strumming a full string, but sometimes I move back and forth on a string. Um, I should, sh I know I'm gonna show you some basic strings and things like that, um, or I should say chords. A uh, string would be just uh, the plucking of one. Uh, but um, a chord, when you strum across and you make it all uh, uh, right, it's always good. Now I, I hold my fingers in this position a lot when I'm maybe talking. Uh, I should just point out it is a C I am pushing. You may not be able to see because of the shadows. I'm gonna try to use my other hand here. Um, right in here, you can't see, and in this finger, you can't see very well because they are they got a big curve to them like this. So if you can see this, oh, sorry, this part of my finger here, the little middle part of those bends, actually looks straight but it's that curve back down that's grabbing the cord now what i use i should you can probably see on the tip of my fingers actually uh, if i can get the light just right so you can see the, the the marks in the tips of my fingers here now that's going to happen to your fingers and when you have fresh new little um, um soft hands especially washing your dishes will keep them soft those are going to be hard to come across right there on your fingers you can see the lines um they will wear down. You're, you'll get callous tips of your fingers, okay? And it, it won't feel anything. Now to say when you're holding a key down and you sliding it, this is a good way to, to try to callous up your fingers a little bit, is just to take a finger, especially your index, because it's a, it's a very strong finger to use, and just drag it up a few frets back and forth and actually let like a speed bump hit them, boom, 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 boom. Now if you do it right enough, you'll even hear it. Now it'll warm up your finger and you'll get, um, if I can show it again, uh, it's really hard to show you. Uh, again with the, oh, come back this way. And back down a little. So I hope you can see that. Now you can do it with all your fingers the same thing. I tell people use the small key if you're gonna do it. And because it's the smallest, it's the one that's gonna cut the most. Don't think doing this is, you could cut yourself, I guess, theoretically, if you did it fast enough and hard enough and you had the soft enough skin, so don't go be crazy here like with kid hands. But um, there's certain ways you want to hold your guitar. Um, your thumb has a lot to do with your guitar holding. It can influence the sound of your guitar, people don't know, uh, multiple reasons. Now, a lot of people and a lot of uh, strumming tends to put your thumb behind the guitar so you don't even see it. Um, what that does is I'll try to turn a bit here my guitar is uh, when you're doing this you're you got pressure and when you have that form of pressure you can put a lot more pressure on your strings this way I'm not pushing on a chord right now I'm just showing you like the that grip pressure wise now what happens I'll try to twist just a bit more here is when you start wrapping your finger around you start to lose strength over those uh, let see if I can pull it up a little more here. You start to lose strength. So that bend in there can actually change if you can see my finger angles when I move my thumb back and forth. Now, as well as, I should show you the other side, if I can. Down, down here, you can see maybe there that the edge of my hand actually touches the guitar sometimes too. Not all the time, but sometimes, because it can add strength to a bend. 
So sometimes you're using the top of your thumb, uh, I should say the, the, the middle point right up here in your thumb to press up at the top or you're going to be all the way in the back of the guitar with your thumb or you're using the edge of your hand to try to push on something because maybe you need to get up higher with your finger, these little fingers up here. So the one thing you don't want to do is tuck too much and let the skin of your hand touch the bottom key because you'll get a dead note there. And when you're coming back over top, you don't want to have a thumb that comes too much over. You can have a dead key. Now I should maybe let you hear the dead. See, you can hear the bottom key right now is a dead key because I got too much. And now if I go up through the top, you can hear a dead key at the top. Now, if you're pushing just a little, uh, a little too much, it'll almost catch. If you're just touching it, oh, you can almost make it mute, especially when you're strumming all the other keys. So for instance, if you're strumming a G, or sorry, a C, that's not a G, that's a C, okay? Some people, when they're beginning to learn the C, may not try to use uh, these two top fingers up here. As you can see, uh, the practice will allow you to, to move fingers while still holding others. So sometimes you wanna leave your pinky out because it's a lot to bring up to that top. And if you just simply keep your pinky, like I can't make my pinky straight while I'm doing this, it wants, but it's not touching anything. So my pinky here isn't touching anything. Um, if you can see, I have a curve on all my fingers. I'm going to try to bring the curve down and flatten them. If I did that, it, you'd, it would dull out all the notes below them. But you can see. So here, I don't know if you could hear that top note. I did touch it and my thumb wasn't on it. It changes the sound of your C just a bit because of the, instead of the, which makes a huge difference in sound. But, if you were to dull it out with the top of your thumb and just, just touch that top note when you strum across everything, it'll dull it out so you won't hear that boom that as much as you should hear that higher sound. So, just to tell you. Now, move your fingers, have a pick. I don't use picks uh, very seldom. I'll use a pick on a guitar. Um, I tend to use my, my thumb, so the one side of my thumb is uh, really, I might say, callous too. Uh, but the tips of my fingers are a little calloused. So you remember when you, you have to have a crooked, not to say a crooked, but a bend in your finger in order to make these 90 degree um, bends to the guitar string. Now, sometimes those 90 degree bends you can get away with because you actually need them to touch a bottom chord. So you can see my bottom, uh, this finger down here, uh, I'm trying to wiggle it, but I can't, I hate my camera because I can't see it, but I know it'll work. It's touching two chords right now down at the bottom. And when it does that, it's made to be able to do two things at once. Because if I was just straight up on it like I am on my C, on my C, but when you want to switch into an F, you can do it like that. But again, that's your top note. You might have trouble doing a bar chord for the first time. So an easier way to try to make your F sound like is just to go like that. Kind of use your thumb at the top again, not to push down, but just to dull it out. So it would be an easier way to try to make the F sound. Only a stream professionals would be able to go, yeah, yeah, I can hear he's dulling out one note, but for anybody else who wants an F in a song, this is an easy way to an F. And then you can just switch back and forth. See, me, I like to make my C's. Now the difference also with that C sound is when you're, and if you already have it, but you can hear how the notes don't go away and they, they don't, they just kind of stay there. And when you're back and forth, each note is stopped every time you let it go. So it doesn't like a piano hold on its sound as long as you're holding the key. You can make different little sounds when you're doing that again for the beginners. I hope I don't bore people with my video and I hope that they get a lot from it. And I don't make too much mistakes. Um, I guess uh, to try to show you here just basic chords and uh, people can come back to this part of the video when it'd be simple. 
Um, I think I'm just going to show you the basic ones. Uh, you can get a chart or a paper or something. I'm going to try to show you um, the best I can. Okay. Uh, again, my thumb in the back. You you kind of want to make note to all my fingers here. Um, oh, come back this way a little. Uh, just trying to make sure uh, the glitches in my camera aren't viewed. So if you thought about this finger right here, uh, my index, it's like the, it's to say the capo right now, if you were to think about it, because there's an A with my three fingers. Now I'm not touching the bottom string, the little one. That one stays open. Okay, so there's nothing touching that. The next one, the second string from the bottom, the uh, second littlest one, you're going to hit. So those are the three strings you're going to hit. Now, you're going to hit the second string from the top too. This is where you don't want to hit your actual top string. You kind of, when you strum an A, strum from the second string all the way to the bottom. That will make your A. If you're good enough and maybe you've got that pressure to throw your thumb back around a little like that, then you won't have to worry about hitting that top note at all because your top thumb will just kind of dull it out by itself and it's just easier to get back and forth. Now, I tell you this is your bar chord because in theory, every note you wouldn't even have to change your fingers for A, B, C, D, E, F, G. You just have to slide on up. So this here, again, remember, is our A. Now, if you go up two, okay, to where, where the bar was across here with your fingers the first time, your three fingers, but now you do everything up, there's your B. So A, two up makes a B. Now, if you just go one more up, that's your C, okay? And then you go two more, is your D. Now, bar cording everything, using a bar chord, especially when you're new, is gonna get a little hard, but it does teach you a lot of strength with your index finger. So the practice of it is very important. So, and then at the same time, when you do that, um, try to drag your fingers like I just did. And that will uh, put your marks on the tip of all your fingers, if you can see them. Uh, hopefully you can again. Oh, a little too high, a little too low. But you get that. That's your A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Now, the, the, it goes uh, A. Now, if you don't want to use your bar chord and just try the B with your fingers, it won't sound very nice, but it'll give you that practice to uh, drag your fingers across and hold them in an A formation because to land them in between the two quickly, when you're playing music, it might be a little easier when you're, that beat and that timing is all happening. Trying to do it uh, while you're not listening or hearing anything and you have to do the music in your head. So that would just help you burn your, not burn your fingers, but get your fingers into formation. Now, I showed you your A and your B. A and B are done both that way. Um, you can do a bar chord A a different way too, which is higher, but your A and B are done that way. Now when you come to your C, which I sh might common holding hand, your C is going to be done, um, well, maybe I didn't say with the A, yeah, I think I said with the A, it's, it's all in the same uh, fret zone. Everything is in here with the A, okay, you hit, this string here, which is your second from the bottom, third from the bottom, and fourth from the bottom. That's your A. Some people will play an A across like this, and then with, you can't see my other hand, but I'll use one of my fingers just to hold that bottom key so you don't hear it. See, you can't hear it. I, so I use my um, the strumming hand, I use one of my fingers to actually hold it out. So you won't hear that bottom key and I can hold my A. So there's another way to make your A so you can slide into your B real easily. And as long as you're not touching the fourth note, or sorry, um, no, the fifth, or the second from the top, if you will, um, as long as you're not strumming it at the same time, your B won't sound that far off like you're missing your bar chord.
Okay, so you have your A, you have, okay, A, B. Now remember I said C was just one up, but C is also, and you can hear the difference in the two C's. One's higher, one's lower. Think about a piano. There's many C's on a piano. One's higher, one's lower. That's how you sort of have to think about it. So sometimes the note is a C, but you don't realize it's a power chord C. And, and it can even give different numbers when you start putting a power chord can, or letters. It can just start changing things. So you got your, your A, your B, your C. Then you can go, uh, I should explain a C. A C would be your two top notes. Then again, if you don't want to touch that very top one, you can just leave your pinky off and bring your uh, middle finger, or sorry, your ring finger down one. So you're actually on the fifth one and not the top one. Uh, and then you're going to be in the second fret column uh, on the fourth one up or third one down, if you will. And then uh, second from the bottom, in the first fret zone okay so is you're going to be your index finger um so remember this don't make no different so you got your c now a d is when you go up here okay uh, d's are pretty easy for a lot of people to do at first because it's just like you're almost like you're making a little fist or something uh, and just keeping your thumb out of the way um your d uh would be just strummed a simple d uh your second zone here, you actually first and third with your two fingers. So there's like a, you can see there's a crack between the two fingers. Um, that crack is the second string, which you're going to use your ring finger on. Now, don't flatten your fingers like this because you're going to hit a whole bunch of other keys and it's just going to sound awful. You have to, there's a, you'll feel that flick. There's, at least my fingers have like a, it flicks and it clicks into almost posi position to where you have those uh, fingers going down at that 90. So you want to be able to do that like that. And it's a, it's, I don't find it hard at all. I, I think the D is a real simple one to do. Um, again, uh, the D, you won't want to hit the two top ones up here. And this is where a little more practice comes in because now your thumb can't just dull out that top one because you also don't want to hit the second one. So you actually just want to hit the four bottom strings when you're doing your D. Now, if you're really good, you can, with your fingers, just kind of make sure you start right from there. You might hit a few top ones, but as long as they're not um, really strong when you're touching them, you'll be fine. After D um, comes probably, uh, I don't even want to say it's the easiest because uh, I guess the E minor is a little easier, but E, um, again, I'm going to flatten my fingers, which you don't want to do. Uh, e is um, the second fret or the second zone of frets there. You want to put your two first ones in here like that. Um, uh, second string from the top and third string string from the top okay and then your index you're going to tuck in and put on the third from the bottom or fourth from the top but in the first zone okay so you're going to get a nice strum e sound okay now your f will be i guess to say your challenging chord because it's an F has to be done as a bar chord. Now, again, there's a little cheat to it I can show you, but essentially your F is uh, the E. You just did an E, but you did it in a different fashion, okay? So you did an E like this. If I were to tell you to do an E like this, which is a little harder to jump to, it's still an E, no different than this, okay? So you got your E. But just like you were going up with your A, B, C earlier and you didn't actually change your fingers other than just add that bar chord sound, this is the same thing. Here's your bar chord right there with my finger, E, and if I move up one, F. So it's going to take you practice with that bar chord to do the F. Now if you remember how to do the C and the way you're positioning your hand just went into that position, 
if you take away your top finger here and you actually bend so it's really comfortable for a beginner and you bend your key so you're actually not at a 90 like this but you just got a little curve on your just a little curve you can more relaxingly put your hand as long as you're touching the two bottom uh, the first two um, strings in the first fret zone right here and then the third string in the second fret zone right here and then the fourth and fifth you're going to put in the third zone with your ring finger and your pinky. Now, don't touch the top note, or if you can get your thumb again, if you got a little more leniency with your hand, use your thumb and just let it kind of drown out the top note. That will make it easy to, to strum your G, uh, or, or your F, sorry. Now, in theory, that's your F. So remember, E, F, and then you go to your G. Now, this is an acceptable G. Um, most people will just say it's acceptable. Um, depending on the books and I guess the people you talk to, this is, um, I guess to say, the most used G. Um, I'm trying to make sure to emphasize I don't use certain fingers um, so they might stick out weird. I don't normally would hold them like that. Your pinky is going to touch the first string at the bottom and then um, on the third fret zone and then your ring finger here is going to touch in the third fret zone too but the top string. So their top and bottom are in the same zone. Now your middle finger is going to come into zone two, second string from the top. That's a G. That's the G. Now, like I said, some literature changes a little bit on how they want to take something and they say something. Now, if you've noticed here when I'm doing my G, the two bottom chords are actually being covered by my one finger. So if you do a G and you actually, instead of like this with your uh, index on the outside which a lot of people will teach you to do your G this way if you do your G with your ring finger actually up and it's not touching anything you use your middle finger and your uh, um, little finger in zone 3 to catch those two sounds and then you use your index to actually hit your second uh, fret zone uh, second chord from the bottom then you can hit your G um, exactly the same. It would make no sound difference, it's just the finger change, uh, the way you organize your fingers. The reason to be able to do this, I don't want to make it sound uh, like all um, special or anything, is because sometimes you need to add sounds to a key or to a note uh, to you know uh, make them a little more full or add more to them, I don't know how to explain it. So I'm going to actually try to just show you on the G here. Now there's a G. Now this is where people, I think it's still a G. That's still a G because those two chords are the same as the power chord G. But if you listen, that's where you get your different sounds. Now, um, I guess to be able to, uh, uh, show people uh, a different sound, uh, uh, or sorry, a different uh, all the notes again, but on a different uh, uh, scale, I guess, is um, is your minors. So you can go back and look at all your A, B, uh, A, B, C, D, F, G right there. Now, I'm going to go backwards now to show your minors just because it sort of makes a little more sense to try to show you. So against your G, G, G. Now, in order to do your G minor, you need to be able to do a bar chord because your G minor is a very, very simple, um, all you do is lift your, your middle finger from your G minor. Okay, so your G, down to a G minor. It's, okay, very simple. That's why I try not to confuse you. Okay, so you get to learn your G again to a G minor. And there are songs that hold that pattern, many songs that hold those patterns of sounds where you're going to come down from one. 
okay? So again, really easy to slide down to our F, right? We just go right back down into that slide position for an F, and then down to an F minor. Again, now I tend to put my uh, finger overlapped on the other one. I tend to do it to help it uh, press um, uh, the other chord down so I don't get, I'm going to call it weak fingered, but if you play the guitar for prolonged periods of time, you'll actually get a, you, know, you can get cramps in your hand and it, it, it's going to be hard to actually move your hand. It's going to hurt even. Try to work through them, but if you use uh, other techniques while you're playing the guitar so you're not always on that same muscles in your hand and you're trying to work at the other muscles, you'll get a less pain in your hand while you're, you are practicing. Okay, so you got your F down to your F minor. Now you can, again, you can cover it or you can just leave it up. It makes no difference, but it might help you to get that extra pressure down there, especially at the tip up here. Just like I was talking about the capo, it's harder to press up here than it is down here at the bottom chords with the strong part of your finger. When you're trying to make it press, it's hard. Um, I should say also, when I am strumming, I'm trying not to put as much pressure uh, in the center part where these keys are being touched with these fingers. Because if I do press a lot with this finger here, it can impact the sound these other fingers will make. So this finger back here, the bar chord finger, is actually trying to only touch the top and the two bottom ones down here. Because if it leaves, I guess to say, you can hear. See how the, sound, the middle chords aren't, they're dulled out? Because if I put too much pressure on them, they're going to just change the pitch by a bit of each note ahead, which most ears again won't hear it, but for a real particular person you may hear it. I probably wouldn't, but again, uh, you know, that perfect sounding, you want to make sure to curve it up and they'll show you in the book that you're only touching that and that, and that uh, those three chords. You can press them all down and it's not going to sound any different, but if you can just touch those top and bottom ones, you're doing far better. Now that's your F and then we're going to drop down again. That's your F. Oh, sorry. Down to your F minor. Okay, now E, remember it's the same thing as your F, you just took your bar chord away and switched your fingers up, right? There's your E, this is the way you should do it. Now if you just lift up your index finger and just, you only have your, that's why I say it, this is the easiest. There's your E minor. It's as simple as a, as a just, these two keys are the only thing I'm, our notes are the only, our strings are the only ones I'm touching in the second fret and the second and third from the top are the ones I'm touching. Um, I hope, uh, okay, so again, E, E minor. Again, there's songs that use those, that, that, that pattern too and they switch. Okay, um, now we're gonna go up to our D Very simple. Now, to do a D minor, um, these two fingers here almost have to switch, but instead of switching and doing a D that way, because it's actually more comfortable to do a D this way than it is that way, but your D minor is just this little string down. But the proper way to do your D is, and then, okay, so there's a little finger switch there again, but very simple note to remember. Okay, so that's your, your D minor from your D. Now, remember your C was like that. You could do it like this and dull out your top. And your acceptable C is there. It sounds higher. But the reason you do this is because you lift this finger, um, your middle finger, put your two strings up, just each up one, so you're covering where your middle finger was and all one string down. This one's going to come down and second string from the bottom on that first fret zone because this is your bar chord, so your fret zone has changed because of your bar chord. So that's your C minor. So you got your C and 
your C minor. There's a little wiggle on my string there just because I'm in that fret zone that's uh, a little harder to play with. You really have to press hard on a fret when it starts to go. Okay, so your C, C minor. Then remember your B is just one down, right? Your B is there. And then same switch you just did for the C. And there's your B minor. So B, B minor. All right. Now, again, remember your B goes down to your A. Remember your bar chord is here now, right? But you don't need to do it because it does it by itself. Now, again, this one is the, I guess to say the easier one to do because instead of uh, switching your fingers this way to, to do your A, mi uh, A minor, which would be the other way I showed you on all the other ones to drop down to the minor. This one's easier because all you do is use your index finger to go back. Very simple again. So A, A minor, B, B minor, C, C minor, D, D minor, E, E minor, F, F minor, G, G minor. That's as easy and as basic as you can get um, your A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and all in the minors too. Now, if you can master those, in the process of mastering them, you'll randomly do other ones. You'll do your D7s, uh, which is a very commonly used uh, note. Um, you'll do, uh, let's say, um, uh, what's another very common string to use? Uh, um, I know that, uh, let's see, your D7s are very, uh, your uh, uh, A minor 7s are very uh, used too. A lot of the 7s are actually used because it's just uh, 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 pretty much using your, your pinky just to add a little sound to everything. Uh, again, your A7s. Um, you're going to need to kind of learn your 7s, but uh, it's just a little, I wouldn't even say more difficult. It's just one more thing to remember after the minors. Uh, maybe even easier to remember than some of the keys. Again, um, uh, 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 to say uh, there should be uh, no problem uh, for a person I hope to see these videos. Uh, I guess I should say this is your first string, second string, third string, fourth string, fifth string, and sixth string is uh, pretty much the way I'm classifying it. Um, if you're going to use fingers, uh, this would be finger one, finger two, finger three, and finger four. Um, is your pinky uh, so index one? Uh, I don't want index one, uh, 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 middle finger two, uh, um, uh, ring finger three, uh, pinky four. Uh, I think it's um, uh, a simple instrument to learn, it's a little bit of math involved if you can figure out some math to be able to get yourself from notes to notes as well as when uh, songs are written, they tend to hold an order of notes. So it, all it is, is um, uh, it's like saying um, uh, A-E-G, 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 A-G, A-G, A-E-G, A-E-G. That's how music is played. So once you start to learn your, your music, it's going to be really easy to remember just the pattern of letters and all you do is remember a letter for where your hands go. Now, often with me, I don't think about which key I have to go to, especially when I'm learning a song I've never heard or played before and I'm not reading um, the tabulature uh, or, or, or um, any of the... Um, uh, stuff to come with it. All I'm doing is like on YouTube listening to the song and playing along with it. I will find a note very quickly. You will learn how to find your notes uh, very quickly. Um, one of the most common things with music uh, is when you find where a song starts, what note the song starts on, there's uh, what they call, I don't know what they call it, it's like the five. So let's say it started on an A, you go A, B, C, D, and E. 
okay? So A, D, and E, more than likely to most good music and what people like, those three notes are going to be pronounced in the song a lot. So if it starts anywhere, uh, let's say it started with a D. So you would go D, E, F, G, A, because you start back. So you go D, G, and A are the notes that would play a song. Now, uh, to be able to maybe show you this uh, 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 a little bit and not play anybody's song, there's your D, G, A. Just three notes, changing the Now, all I was doing there was lifting my finger back and forth, adding a little bit of sound. So when you're learning a song, you might hear something and you, you're like, where is he going with that note? Sometimes all he's doing is, it is another note, but he's doing it so minute of a time that somebody might not even write it if you are reading a tabulature. So... So I just showed you here, you just move your fingers around, you will find the other notes sometimes where you need them. Um, like I say, um, practice, I have i don't consider myself any form of professional, I don't think I'm all that good. Uh, my guitar is not even all that great. Um, I don't think anybody who's learning guitar should go out and spend a lot of money. I think if you're going to learn to play guitar and you're, uh, let's say, um, under, uh, let's say you're under the age of 13, I would say, you know, go, go and buy yourself a hundred dollar guitar um, because it's, you're either going to find out if it doesn't get used or it does. And, you know, just, just get a common um, uh, one that they make in a lot, uh, because it's just going to get used up. It probably won't be kept the first guitar, won't even be kept at all, I bet. Um, the thing is, is, you know, if you, if, if you, sh if you're good at it and you start to play, then you might want to buy your first guitar at maybe, uh, three, four hundred dollars. Um, generally I would say with a case included because you don't want to necessarily leave it, uh, um, uh, I've had guitars broke. If they had been in their case, they wouldn't have been broke. I ended up buying, uh, it's um, a little, uh, not a stool, I guess. It's a guitar stool, I guess. It's a, it's a little stand for my guitar. Uh, uh, I have it. Um, it's generally where my guitar sits. Uh, I don't tend to lean my guitar up against stuff. Because a $20 stand is, uh, uh, trust me, worth even a $100 guitar. Um, when it comes to falling and breaking, uh, you won't be happy. Um, I personally have never broken a guitar of mine. It's been done by other people hitting it, running by it, and things like that. So I've lost a few guitars. Um, had they been in their case or in their stand, I don't think they would have ever been broke. So again, uh, you know, uh, I, uh, I have a $20 guitar stand. I bought it on 50% off on sale too. Um, so I, I made sure I, uh, to, to have it. And I, actually, I did that after the second guitar I had did break because uh, I would... Um, put my guitar up in the corner all the time, uh, uh, which you shouldn't do also. Also, um, I should say that when you're uh, here with your guitar, um, uh, when you're tuning them, if you lean this up against something, it will untune your guitar. That is fact. Also, if any of these are wiggly when you're going like that, sometimes there's something here to tighten them, sometimes. Um, and you don't ever want these to be wiggly, ever want them to be wiggly. Uh, they should always be nice and, and no um, uh, movement at all whatsoever to them. Um, uh, that's one thing. Another thing would be, uh, uh, depending on how much you use, you know, I, 
if I use my guitar, uh, you know, four hours a day, uh, six hours a day, I might need to change my guitar strings every couple of weeks just because uh, they'll lose their sound. Um, you can also take your strings off and boil them. Uh, if you take your strings and boil them in hot water, take them out right away, basically throw them in a cloth and dry them up. Uh, what I do is uh, how they come wrapped up. I rewrap them that way when I take them off to throw them in the boil of pot of, a pot of water and I boil them all up and you can get a lot of sound back. The reason the sound goes on a string, especially the bigger ones, is all these, all those cracks there fill up with the dirt on your hands. Now also you'll get dirt, my guitar is fairly dirty, you get dirt that builds up in behind here. Now often when I change my um, strings, I change one at a time so I'm able to catch that sound real quick while tuning and find the next one. Every three or four times you do change, your, you want to take all your strings off and you want to clean everything in between here. Often when you take all your strings off, this bone, um, this is the bridge, uh, it's, it's generally it's made of bone, it may f just be there loosely as well. So this could play a change, you could notice that there's a little gap on one side and not on the other and that could change all the sound to your guitar. This uh, needs to be replaced at times too because they are grooved in here and if you're bad at tuning your guitar you'll get a lot of wear because it starts to drag when you're turning and you're you're tuning up your key this grooves are actually eating and digging inside the bone here while they're being pulled back so knowing how much to tune your guitar is a big thing as well um when you wrap your guitar strings, my guitar head is a little dusty, if you don't mind, I'll try to get it over here. Um, when you do uh, uh, wrap, you tend to want to wrap uh, a minimum, I would say, of three wraps above in generalness. Now, I've heard all different proper ways to wrap guitar strings and stuff. Um, one big thing is cut them. You take one of these in the eye, the little tiny one here, it can enter your skin faster and you won't even know. It's, it's like a needle, it, better than smaller than a needle. It will go in your skin, you won't feel it, and then it'll feel like you got a huge bruise under your skin, especially your little fingers. So I tell people you want to take these and generally just bend them inwards so they're not on the outside of the guitar. Um, my cats like to try to bite these and eat these, and again, something poking them in the eye could really harm anybody. Especially when you put this up on a guitar stand, it is the perfect height for a child, a young child's face, and these will stick out um, six, eight inches outwards, so they could easily harm somebody. So cut them down, leave about, I'd say, over an inch to them, but about an inch, because if you do take them off and you want to rewrap them, you don't want it too difficult to rewrap. Um, if you cut your strings right down, good luck on rewrapping them then. Uh, you'll never get a string back on. Um, the next thing would have to be, again, there's a little uh, sand nut. Make sure that nothing ever here is ever uh, 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 too loose or anything like that. When you wrap a string, you want to have the hole um, across like that, pretty much. So when you put your string through, you want the first wrap to actually go under the string that's coming out the hole once it goes all the way around. And then you want the wrap to overlap it and go across onto the top. So what happens is your three wraps that are wrapping along the top of your little thing here, if I can show you, uh, when it goes around and it wraps, I don't know if you can see it, the three wraps on top of the string that's underneath are actually, because there's a contour to the, to the peg itself goes down like that. So as you wrap the string up, it wants to get down and tighten on itself by the strings that are coming above it. So that's how you tighten up so they don't pull back out or loosen with time. So the string has to go one under minimum when you wrap it around and then their second and third wrap will go. I might make a video one day, uh, probably will, on how I wrap my strings because I do it a little differently than most people but because I don't like that string back that comes back. Um, again, I, I got a dusty head here. Uh, you can be a big person who dusts your gu guitar a lot, but uh, mine's always sitting out and I have a very, very dusty house uh, with a wood stove. So um, I keep my guitar as far away from my wood stove as well because I don't want it to dry out. I keep it actually in a, a to a big degree controlled uh, everything room um, that I spend the majority of my day in. So uh, this guitar is a uh, pretty... Uh, 
um, use, let's say, you know, uh, my guitar myself. I think she's a, a seven, yeah, at least, no more than that. She, oh yeah, she's about seven, seven or eight years old, my guitar already. Um, I'm surprised it's lasted this long. Um, again, you need to, I need a big cleanup on my guitar. It's been a, a, a few, um, uh, well, at least six months since I've cleaned it up. But in the last, say, four months, I've been uh, um, playing on a recorder, a flute, uh, if you will. Uh, I know I got it around here somewhere. It's not a very good one. I've dropped it a thousand times. Anyways, yeah, I've been playing with this a lot. Um, I just enjoy uh, uh, the playing of it. And again, I got my pianos right there. So, yeah, I'm always sitting in this room. I also have a, a violin and a a banjo uh, also I enjoy tinkering around and playing with but uh, I just thought that people might want to know a, a video on guitar and I figure I'd spend you know a half hour hour or whatever explaining all the necessities um, and you know and maybe uh, what I'm not doing so good and what could be done better uh, or just stuff that the beginners want to know um, um, there's also I don't I, I don't have it handy with me there's a um, what they call a reel, a string reel. It's a little tiny. Um, I know I have it underneath in my in my uh, um, what do you call it uh, piano bench. It's a little thing that comes here. And it looks like a uh, a little reel, and what it does is it helps you wind your chords up when you're doing it. Because one of these turns turns this very little amount. So it takes a lot of turns to actually get that to do one full turn. So if you get a little string wrapper, it's really, really easy to, to wrap your strings. Also in uh, those, the, it's like a little bar with a little, it looks like an L, but the L is like a big fat L at the bottom. And it has that hole that can just slide over top of that. As well in that little hole that slides over it, there's usually a little groove. And that groove is to take the pegs out at the bottom of your guitar. Um, most people don't actually know that. Um, it It's just like a, like a, to say it's like a fork that just slides in on each side. So you just slide it in and prop it up and those pegs come back out. Um, you always want to loosen your uh, guitars way off. So they're right out of the groove and that you have a lot of things before you release your, your pegs at the bottom of the guitar. Do not release the pegs of the guitar until that string itself is completely loosened because that peg can fly, it can break, it can do many things uh, if it's coming in with the mm -hmm. tension these strings got. Um, Another thing is, is when you put your, uh, the strings back down into the peg holes, make sure that the little, uh, the bump or the dimple on the bottom of the string, which is meant to keep it in the hole, there's usually a, a groove on the peg itself. Um, so when you're sliding it in there, that the string itself with the little bump on the bottom, when it goes down, it'll, it actually gets held by that groove. Most people will push it down and it goes down like that. What you have to make sure um, that the string does is that that little loop stays up high. So when it slides down, it goes like that and the little loop and the knot at the top will actually stay uh, grabbing the back of the guitar underneath. Because if you slide it down and it grabs that the little lump at the bottom of the string and then you're playing your guitar later and that bump slides up like that, all your string will be loosened and it can even hurt you when it lets out that amount of pressure. So make sure that when you're putting your the back of your string down that little hole that you're putting the peg in and you're fishing it until you feel it come back up and grab the actual uh, the 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 um uh I guess to say the flat top of the guitar but from the back of the flat top. Um so it slides in and it grabs rather than pulling that string down by that little that little bar or that little lump that sits there at the bottom. Um, some strings you have to actually tie up, especially with plastic ones and stuff. So that works to different things, but you know, it's not to say it's unsafe. It's a different tie lesson, but uh, I just don't want people to actually get hurt from, uh, uh, anything, um, that they shouldn't. Uh, I guess I should earlier at the beginning, I know I showed, uh, uh, these little, uh, dots here. Um, these little dots are, so I don't have to look at the front of my guitar and it helps now over time you will just get the feeling of your guitar and you'll know uh, where it comfortably is all the time. So when you're sliding and you just wanna slide up into another chord like that, like I don't even look at it. I just know where to go by my fingers. It gets a little harder when you're, when you're say doing something down here and you need to slide up. 
something like that. Now, you can look at your guitar because try not look at your guitar and to go and then automatically know where to go. Now, if you listen, I drag on keys too. And that sound we can also help you just m memorize that sound where to stop. That that cuz if I went I can hear it's not doesn't sound right that, so I wouldn't even strum it because I already know I have to go down one. See? I know I have to bend it. I, I know that sound isn't right when I've dragged, so. Real simple, dragging your note across. Um, Again, get comfortable with the keys you find easiest. It's going to be the best thing for you to learn this. Um, I guess this is a good guitar lesson. I, if I have any comments or anything, please let me know, especially if I've done mistakes. I'm not a guy to, to edit videos and everything like that. If I made a mistake, I try to explain it right away. Uh, sometimes I make a mistake and I didn't even realize I said maybe a note that was wrong. That's why I try to repeat them multiple times too to make sure, you know, if I did one mistake, that the five other would explain oh you make you realize that i might i said a mistake without actually having to to you know write on the screen or anything and say oh i meant to say this oh i meant to say that so um i hope i uh help a, a bunch of people um again i'll post this on youtube and i don't think i'm even going to edit this video so uh there's an hour of a guitar lesson for anybody all right thank you bye